Hello everyone. In this video, I'll discuss about the breadth first search approach for graph traversal. So as we know, graph is a nonlinear data structure. So there has to be some systematic way to explore the graph. In general, there are two methods which we can use to traverse the graph. One is breadth first search approach and second is depth first search approach. So in this video, I'll only discuss about the breadth first search algorithm. Let's take this example of graph. First thing is we have to select a source node from where we will start traversing the graph. Then we have to visit all the nodes that are reachable from this source node. Second thing is we have to avoid duplicates while traversing. So while traversing, we will traverse each node once only or we will visit each node once only. So next thing is visit the nodes in level order. This is the key thing for breadth first search algorithm. What it means, first of all, visit the source node that is a in our case then visit the neighbors of a the neighbors of a or the adjacent vertex of a are b and d so we will write b and d now visit the neighbors of neighbors means the neighbors of b and the neighbor of d so the neighbor of b are a and c we will not visit a because we have already visited it as per our second condition that is to avoid duplicates we will skip this we will only visit the node c now we will visit the neighbors of D. Again, the neighbors of D are A, E and F. So we will skip A and we will only visit E and F. Then we will visit the neighbors of E and F that is G and H. So in that way, we can visit the nodes in level order. One more way of explaining this is visit the nodes in step by step order means first of all visit all the nodes which are reachable from the source node in one step then visit all the nodes that are reachable from the source node in two steps and so on so let's start so we can say that we can reach the node a from from a in zero steps we can reach the node b in one step from the source node that is a also we can reach the node c in two steps from the source node that is two we can reach the node D in one step. We can reach the node E in two steps. One plus one, that is two steps. We can reach the node F in two steps. One plus one. We can reach the node G in three steps. Means two plus one, that is three. And also for the same, and same for the H, we can reach the node H in one, two, and three steps. Now we can say that the source node that is A is at the level of zero or is at zeroth level. So we will mark it as zero level. The node B and D are at level one. The node C, E and F are at level two. So these C, E and F are at level two. And finally the node G and H are at level three. So if we run our BFS algorithm on given graphs G with source node as A, then our output should be, first of all, we will visit all the nodes at zero level. That is only A. Or we can color it like A. Next, we will explore all the nodes at level one. The nodes at level one are B and D. Next, we will visit all the nodes at level 2, that is C, E and F. Next, we will visit all the nodes at level 3, which are G and H. So, whenever we are asked to run our BFS algorithm on a given graph, on this graph, the output should be this. One more thing to be noted that the order of B and D can interchange. Also, the node order of C, E and F can also interchange and G and H also, it depends how you implement your graph or how you store your graph as an adjacency list. But the relative order of A, B, D, C, E, F and G, H should be same. Let's try to do it in a more systematic way. Now I'll explain you the actual breadth first search algorithm. The first step is to select our source node. Let's say our source node is A. Then we have to initialize the level of A. The level of A is zero. And the parent of A will also be null because we are starting our traversal of graph from the node A. So we'll write here null. To keep track of all the visiting node or the nodes which are visited, we will create an array visited and initialize it with A. 
Next thing is to visit the node in level order. We will use a queue data structure and initialize it with A. So all the initialization is done. Now we will start our algorithm. The first step is to put the first step is to pop the first element of Q that is A. So we'll pop the first element of Q that is A. Now we start traversing all the adjacent vertex of A. The, all the adjacent vertex of A. The first adjacent vertex of A we can see here is B. So we will mark this vertex B as visited here. So we'll add it to the visited list. Next we will calculate the level of B. The level of B will be the level of the source node plus one. So the level of B will be one and the parent of B will be A. Final thing is we will add this vertex B to our queue. Now we will explore the next vertex of next adjacent vertex of A that is D. So the parent of D is A and we will mark the vertex D as visited. So we will add it into the visited list and the level of D will be 0 plus 1, 1. And we will add this vertex D to our queue. Now we will explore the next adjacent vertex of A. So we can see that all the adjacent vertex of A are already explored. So we will pop the next element from the queue. So that is B. Now we will explore the adjacent vertex of B. So adjacent vertex of B are A. But since A is already visited, we will skip this. So we check in this list whether A is visited or not. Yes, A is visited. So we will, we will skip this. Next, we will check C. Okay, is C is visited? No. So we will add it to the visited list first. And then we will add it to the queue. Then we will calculate the parent of C. The parent of C is B. And the level of C will be the level of B plus 1. That will be because we are traversing C through the node B. Is there any other vertex left which is adjacent to V? No. So we will pop the next element from our Q that is D. So we will explore all the adjacent vertex of D. The adjacent vertex of D are A. But A is already visited so we will skip this. Next is E. Is E visited? No. So we will add E to the visited list. We will add E to the Q. And we will calculate the parent of E. Parent of E will be D because it is visited through the node D. And the level of E will be the level of D plus 1. So that is 2. Similarly, the next adjacent vertex of D is F. So we will add F to our visited list. We will add F to our Q. We will calculate the parent of F. The parent of F will be D because we are traversing it through the node D. So we'll write it here as this way and the level of F will be 1 plus 1 that is 2 or the level of D plus 1 that is 2. So all the adjacent vertex of D are visited. Now we will pop the next element from our Q that is C. We will explore all the adjacent vertex of C. So the adjacent vertex of C is B, but that is already traversed. So we will skip this. Now again, we will pop the next element from the Q that is E. So the adjacent vertex of E are D that is already traversed, F that is already traversed and G. G is not traversed or visited. So we will add G to our visited list. We will add G to our Q and we will calculate the parent of G. The parent of G will be E because we are traversing it through the node E. So we will write it like this and then we will calculate the level of G. The level of G will be the level of E plus 1. That will be 3. Now all the adjacent vertex of E are visited. So we will pop the next element. The next element is F. We will mark cross all the items that are popped. Now the adjacent vertex of F are D. D is already visited. Next adjacent vertex of F are F is E that is also visited. Next adjacent vertex of F is H. H is not visited. So we will add H to our visited list. 
then we will add h to our q then we will calculate the parent of h the parent of h is f because we are traversing it through the vertex f so we will write it like this next we will calculate the level of h the level of h will be the level of f plus 1 this will be 3 now we will pop the next element from our q that is g so the adjacent vertex of g are e and h so e is also visited and h is also visited so we will pop the next element from the q that is h the adjacent vertex of h are g and f g is also already visited f is also already visited so now there is no element left in the q so we will stop our algorithm now if we look at this a b c a b d c e f g h this is the required output as we can see first of all node a is visited that is at the level 0 next node b and d are visited that are at level 1 next node c e f that is c e f are visited which are at level 2 and then finally the node g and h which are at level 3 so this is the breadford search algorithm from the figure we can also inference that we are able to calculate the shortest distance of all the vertex from the source node suppose if i say what is the shortest distance from the source node a to g so the level of g is actually the shortest distance from the node a so if we want to find the shortest distance from source node to any given vertex v that will be the level of vertex v for an undirected graph we can find the shortest path from source vertex to any vertex how to calculate the shortest path what we will do we will go to the target vertex suppose our target vertex is e then we will go to the parent of e the parent of e is t then we will go to the parent of a and since a is the source vertex then this is the path the path is e d a that is e d a or we can write it in reverse order that is a d e so this is the path from the vertex a to the vertex e let's take another example now suppose if you want to find the path from the vertex a to the vertex g then we will go to the vertex g then check the parent of g the parent of g is e if this is equal to a no then we will continue our search then we will check the parent of e the parent of e is d then we will check the parent of d that is a but a is equal to our source vertex so we will stop here or we can print it in reverse order that is a d e g so this is the complete breadth for such algorithm in using which we can find the shortest distance shortest path for an undirected graph also and the time complexity for this breadth for search algorithm is o of v plus e because we are visiting every vertex therefore v is here and we are exploring each edge from each vertex so total the sum of all edges will be e so if there are e edges in a graph and v vertices then the time complexity will be o of v plus e so this is all about bfs theory in the next video i will explain how to implement bfs in python and thank you for watching